Okay, uh, we're going to try something new here. Welcome to Mr. Fisher's podcast. I guess you might want to call it video cast. Um, and we're going to try to do something new because uh, I just don't like having the substitutes give you some worksheets. Um, and you sit around, you talk all day long, you do absolutely nothing. So we're going to rock out. Like I'm right here in the room, but I'm really not here in the room. Okay, uh, we're going to continue to move on here, and uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is known as the Industrial Revolution. Um, and a lot of you, especially some of you who had uh, U.S. history, um, either in eighth grade or ninth grade, uh, we've talked about the Industrial Revolution before. But we're on the topic of revolutions, um, and it's all you know, all stem stemming from this age of enlightenment. You know, challenging uh, the ways of thinking, uh, going about uh, new ways of inventions and ideas, and we're going to continue that here. Uh, before we begin, I want to watch a short little video on YouTube. Yes, we're going to watch a video of a video uh, that is going to explain this age of industrial uh, revolution, uh, this massive change in the industries from producing goods with these, that's right, those are huge muscles, uh, to now producing it with uh, machines, so tools, steam power, coal power, uh, electricity, which is going to be much more efficient. So follow along with me here um, and make sure that you're filling out the, the information on your sheets as we go along uh, because you are going to turn that in as a part of assignment plus you're going to do something on the back of it. So let's rock and roll. In the late 1700s, most people worked in the fields on land they did not own. Those who owned the land, called aristocrats, lived refined lives in elegant manor houses. Servants raised their children and did their housework. The landowners and the people who worked for them depended upon each other. It was a system that had existed for centuries. In towns across England and the United States, a series of extraordinary innovations would alter the way people lived and worked for the next 150 years. Inventors had found new ways to harness nature's energy. They built new kinds of machines powered by water, steam, and coal. The new machines replaced hand-powered tools. They did the same work, only cheaper and faster. Much of the work was done outside the home in specially designed buildings, the first factories. Mechanization began in the textile mills of England, where one machine attached to a spinning wheel could do the work of 50 people. Fuel, clothing, and food all became more affordable. With the development of locomotives and steamboats, manufactured goods could now be sold halfway around the world. Families moved from the villages of their ancestors to new industrial towns. And a new class of people emerged, workers who produced goods. Industrialists, the people who owned the factories, employed hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. And they made enormous profits in their industrial centers. But while the Industrial Revolution brought wealth to some and jobs for others, it came with a price tag. Pollution from coal-powered factories turned the cities black. Lack of housing created the first urban slums. And the demand for more and more goods and higher profits brought the exploitation of workers, including children. Some of the worst conditions were seen in the textile mills of New England. In the 1830s, a 10-year-old mill girl described her life. We were paid two dollars a week, and the working hours of all the girls extended from five o'clock in the morning till seven in the evening, with one half hour for breakfast and for dinner. It was the hiring of children, some as young as five years old, throughout the 1800s and early 1900s, that outraged the public. Workers and reformers protested. They formed unions and associations, and fought for government regulations to limit the workday and protect children. These laws helped address many of the abuses brought on by the Industrial Revolution. Today, we are in the middle of another revolution, a technological revolution. We live in what's called the Global Village. 
because we can connect with people around the world as if they lived next door. And we can now work anytime and anywhere. We will have to wait and see where this new revolution leads. All right. Um, just a few things that I want to touch on from uh, from that video that we had we had just seen right there. Um, and again, you should be writing stuff down as you're watching the movie. Um, and what we kind of are going to see in this industrial revolution period is that people, uh, for a long period of time, if you kind of jump back to our idea of manorialism, which kind of developed out of feudalism, it was the idea of the self-sufficient farm, the self-sufficient community where everything, most everything, was produced right there on the land. Um, so all of your clothing, your metal work, uh, your carpentry uh, was produced right there. Now, as we move into the Industrial Revolution, people now are going to move away from using, again, their fingers and muscles uh, to now having machines uh, produce that good, whatever it is that need to be produced. So in the same time as people are now depending on machines to do the job, they are also going to be moving to the cities. Hmm, I wonder why people are moving to the cities during the Industrial Revolution. J-O-B-S, jobs, okay? There's a new type of freedom that is going to come out of moving to the city. There is the, the hope, the dream that if I move to the city and get this job, I'm going to get rich. However, some people did get rich. But we know a lot of negatives of this industrialization period were the actual um, abuses of the worker from child labor, uh, women's rights, poor pay, excuse me, long working hours, no benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Good and bad. All right. I also think at the end of the video, it was really interesting to show you another revolution that we are in right now, the technological revolution. And that video was probably only produced uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And just look how far the computer and the cell phone has came. Um, it, it's amazing to see what our country is going to do. Okay. So now back to this here. Um, what we're going to try to answer in this first part uh, is we're going to try to answer, and this is going to be uh, kind of out of the book. We're going to do a little reading in the book. Uh, if you want to turn to page 508 right now, let's do so. Uh, this, this part, what we're going to do right now is that we're going to be talking about the major causes of the Industrial Revolution. Now, the Industrial Revolution um, is still happening today. There are some countries that are still industrializing, uh, that are still um, moving from producing things with these guys to producing stuff with actual machinery. Um, the United States obviously has been through the Industrial Revolution, but it's only been a hundred years or so since we've kind of came out of this Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution happens in Great Britain first and quickly spreads throughout the rest of the world. Okay, hmm, I wonder why Great Britain. Lots of resources, lots of people. Okay, uh, turn to page 508. Okay, cool. On page 508, I want to start reading uh, right where it says a turning point in history. And yes, I do want you to follow along, and I'm talking to all of you specifically. A uh, turning point in history, and we're going to see how it was to what the major changes are going to be, and then we're going to see what the causes are. Okay, a turning point in history. In 1750, most people worked the land using simple handmade tools. They lived in simple cottages lit by firelight and candles. They made their own clothes and grew their own food. In nearby towns, they might have exchanged goods at a weekly outdoor market. Like their peasant ancestors, these people knew little of the world that existed beyond their village. The few who left home traveled as far as their feet or horse-drawn cart could take them. Those bold adventures, adventurers who dared to cross the seas were at the mercy of winds that filled billowing sails. Then the Industrial Revolution began. Dun, dun, dun. For growing numbers of people, the rural way of life began to disappear. By the 1850s, many country villages had grown into industrial towns. Again, moving from the, the rural life to the city life. Their inhabitants bought food and clothing in stores that offered a large variety of machine-made goods. The work They worked indoors behind a counter desk or factory machine. Their homes were multi-story tenements. Industrial age travelers moved rapidly by train or steamship. Urgent messages flew along telegraph wires. New inventions and scientific firsts 
poured out of each year between 1845 and 1855, for example, an American dentist used an aesthetic for the first time. A French physicist measured the speed of light, and a German chemist developed the Bunsen burner. Ellis Howe made the first sewing machine, and a Hungarian doctor introduced antiseptic methods to reduce the risk of women dying at childbirth. Still, more stunning challenges occurred in the next century, creating our familiar world of skyscraper cities and carefully tended suburbs. Cars and televisions, air travel and antibiotics, and mass other goods and services made their appearance. How and why did these great changes occur? Historians point to a series of interrelated causes that helped trigger the industrialization of the West. So when we think of the industrialization, I have a tendency of thinking of just machines, okay? Machines do the job. However, during this industrialization period, we also have kind of a scientific breakthrough, all right? You see antiseptics, uh, anesthetics, um, sewing machines, um, all sorts of other different things. The German uh, chemist uh, that they're talking about there, uh, the French physicist measuring the speed of light, um, all sorts of crazy sweet things uh, that are going on in this time period. So let's look at the things that caused it. Again, continue to write down your answers here as we go along. Uh, let's look at some causes, and you can kind of see in the book as they, they come along. Uh, the first thing that allows for an industrial revolution to take place, uh, particularly in Great Britain and even in the United States, is an agricultural revolution. Now, this is probably very similar to the agriculture revolution that we studied before, if not the exact same one. The idea of new technologies, uh, the three-field system, um, and a bunch of other things that allowed for more production of food. Okay? Now, there are some new ones that are going to be invented in this agricultural revolution. The first one that we see are going to be new methods of farming, new ways of farming that are going to be more efficient, that are going to get more out of the land. Okay, some examples of that, the use of dikes. Um, so this would be, for example, like if you had um, a, a, maybe an ocean front or if you had a lake front um, and you, what you decided to do is that you decided to create some sort of dam that dammed off some water that left the land in behind that was bare. Now that land itself is actually very fertile because there's been nutrients that have settled in the water to the bottom and now that, that land there can be used to produce food. I mean, food and other different types of crops. Uh, the use of fertilizers, uh, what they have decided to do was mix different soils together. As they mix different soils together, they realized that the production of food increased the next year. Another idea is the idea of rotating crops. So uh, one year maybe planting corn and the next year planting wheat and the next year then planting beans and beans being the big one. Beans have the tendency of putting more nitrogen into the soil. All right. There are also new other technologies that were developed, such as the seed drill. So instead of taking a handful of seeds and just throwing it out there in no particular order, um, which was very, very wasteful because some of the seeds just wouldn't uh, grow, the seed drill planted them in specific rows, just like a drill, drilling into the ground. All right. And so what we see here is more food that's being produced. Okay. Now, if you have more food, what do you think is going to happen next? Oh, population is going to explode. All right. Now, as population begins to explode, we now have more food for more people, and now we're going to get more work done. Okay. And we already know this. So, how does this help the Industrial Revolution? Hmm. Can we get work done without having people? No. Okay. So, it was very important to have plenty of workers. Without workers, the Industrial Revolution would not have happened. Okay. Now, the last thing that kind of helps out this industrialization period is an energy revolution. All right. Now, we start to maximize our potential of using wind or earth energies rather than muscle energies. Look, I know I'm huge. I know I'm ripped. But after a while, my muscles can only do so much. I need breaks. I need food. I need to go to the bathroom. I need benefits. And I also need to get paid. Those things are very, very, very costly for a business. If I can eliminate those things and if I can find other sources of energy, that's going to make me maximize my profit that much more. So, for example, they started to use water power. Okay, so you think to yourself, well, water power, uh, yeah, this is pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, um, it, to us it seems very, very obvious, but the idea here is turning a turbine, having it connect to some gears inside, having it connect to some gears inside, and then eventually turning something, 
Okay, whether that be to grind flour, or that to be to run a sew, uh, a sewing machine that goes up and down, whatever. But the idea here is that now that people are invent inventing these new different ways of power, they have time. I don't have to sit there and turn that water wheel. The water is doing it for me. I don't have to sit there and turn that windmill. The wind's doing it for me. So while that's happening, I can be doing other things. I can be... Um, specializing in other occupations. I can be inventing new types of technologies. I can be uh, harvesting my crops more. Okay, So a lot of cool things that are going on with this new power. Eventually what happens, happens out of this, if you look at water and wind power, even today uh, with green energies, water and wind power are somewhat limited. Um, the, the speed of the, the river is only going to go so fast. Okay, I don't think you're going to attach a water wheel to a class 5 rapid because it's going to blow it away. Uh, wind only blows once in a while. So you're really limited in your amount of power here. However, if we can find another source that can be consistently quick and consistent um, over a period of time, it's going to make this process that much more faster and give us more power in a longer period of time. And that, my friends, okay, um, is going to be the use of coal. Eventually, what we, we realize is that if we take coal, heat water with it, produce steam, we can get something going. Now, a perfect example of this is the railroad. So this is kind of an, an example here of how a steam engine works, but we can take the idea of uh, a steam engine that obviously runs a rail, uh, a uh, what the heck's it called, a train, um, and then we can apply it to the industry. So you can take the same basic concept of you know taking coal, heating up water, produce steam to move something. Um, and here's a, a pretty good example of how this happens. This down here would be water. The water heats up. Um, it pushes up into here, it turns some levers and gears, and eventually gets the, 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 the wheels moving. Okay, uh, A basic concept to us, but from here, it was a breakthrough piece of technology. Okay, So these are the three causes. Agricultural leads to more food being produced, and now that we have more people, we can get more things done. Coupled with the fact that we have new sources of energy is going to really take off this industrial revolution. So all I want to do first is look at the industrial revolution, causes to it, and then later on we'll see where it's actually happening and why. Next we're going to look at Britain. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your sheets and flip them over, flip it over, okay? And I want you to do this next part right here, okay? I want you to take your, your piece of paper and fold it into thirds. Now I know a lot of you have issues with folding your papers into thirds. Take it and try fold it. Boom, 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 boom. Now, you should have three parts. One, two, three. Your task is to come up with an illustration highlighting the three major causes to the Industrial Revolution. The Agricultural Revolution, population, energy. These need to be colored. They need to be turned in by tomorrow. I Tomorrow, you'll be working on your papers in class. So make sure that this is done and turned in. The substitute teacher will be collecting it. Peace out.